Honestly, Rich, I know how you feel. I say hello, I say goodbye, do a bit of shouting in between. Lacoste says all the smart stuff. In the meanwhile, looking at these two drafts, the two teams, are you leaning one way or the other? Uh, I'd say 60-40 for EG, for where I've seen a lot of Ursa games where he completely takes over. Might, might not be the easiest laning stage, because he's laning into Tidehunter. Tidehunter plus Shadow Shaman is going to be a ton of damage, a ton of minus armor. Yeah. Even though it sounds good on paper, but, um, you know, it's... Same goes for, like, Slark into Tidehunter. It's really not that good early on. It's more about, like, once you get the levels in the mid-game, you're going to feel that, you know, good matchup. But in the laning stage, it's really not that great. And, I, you know, panel discussed about how you know, this is not a really experienced LAN team. They're not really playing in LAN environment right now. They're in sure. a hotel where they've been, uh, you know, isolated. They made this as their home for the last 10 days. So I, f I, I really don't feel that this is going to influence how they're going to play the game. Maybe when it comes down to the big stage, then it's going to matter. But right now, I feel pretty confident how Team Spirit is going to perform in this one. Yeah, you call that Wraith King pick right at the end, something that can contend with that Coil, the Doom, and these extended team fights from EG, of course, with his reincarnation. And a point that AUI brought up as well was that that early rotation potential from EG, collapsing onto mid lane around the five with the 10-minute catapults with, with the Earth Spirit, the Enchantress around the Dream Coil, and maybe even TP the Doom in there to set that tempo early on and try and limit. Team Spirit and how they do build up into their key items because they are they are quite reliant on an itemization, especially on that Wraith King. EG is going to run an aggressive trial lane, so they have a Sentry Ward already on the Enchantress to be able to devore the big camp and put the ton of pressure. Earth Spirit Enchantress plus Ursa seems super strong. One of the reasons because we discussed it, panel talked about it. Uh, Tidehunter, like, he is really strong, and now they're also, like, adjusting the lanes, uh, it seems. They're definitely gonna need to bring Shadow Shaman if EG mm. keeps the tri lane roll from the Earth Spirit. Straight past them. And they also body block that bottom wave, so it's under tower. That's gonna mean it shoves out a little bit better and forces the Wraith King and the Grimstroke to be in a more awkward open position to allow that, that roll, that move in with a creep and EG to play aggressively. So there's the adaptation from Spirit, also making up their trial lane. And a three versus three down bottom. Team Spirit will need to body block the big camp. They see the center ward on the Enchantress. Our Spirit wants to block the small camp, so there's not gonna be a pull. Nicely done by Crit. Yeah, stopping any kind of creep manipulation. Might take a lot of damage though from this. He might skill Inkswall, just kidding, doesn't get it. If Shaman was a bit closer, maybe if he had a boots of speed, but went for a more stat-oriented build. Magic Stick, two Ironwood Branches, a Fairy Fire, and a six Stangos. Honestly, really well done by Yatoro so far. Four and two, even after that little uh, body block, the pullback, the lane in the state it's in. Still gets a good amount of CS from under his tower and then pushing forward. So not the devastating situation that maybe could have been in this early laning setup from EG. But for now, the tri lanes, a little bit of calm there. We can take a peek into some of these other spots. Abed on the putt in towards mid, going up against that Tiny, of course, as Tiny. Toronto Tokyo. Tiny gets level six. There's going to be an instant rotation from the Earth Spirit already there, hiding in the trees, ready to snap the call. So this type of rotation is very easy to, you know, like know what they're going to do. So I expect Team Spirit react to that like prematurely uh, you know when you're going to be able to hit level six on tiny uh, you call for a support help and someone should be there possibly yeah just the shadow shaman sit there in the trees also be ready for that type of a play meanwhile on the top lane we have tide hunter plus a dube both of these heroes are going to keep farming not um, a good matchup for tide hunter in the mid game because this most likely will be the hero that the doom wants to go on with the ulti yeah again possibility that earth spirit makes a rotation to the top one more time extra slow extra stun to bring this tight hunter down right now it's kind of interesting though right because usually tight hunter we consider to be very good against these melee heroes bullying them with anchor smash getting forward but if isocyte brings the regen that he needs to sustain in that lane he's got devour which will be able to outscale the tight hunter especially going into mid to late game this is where isocyte shines uh, historically he's been always good and then in these one versus one scenarios oh, sure. you can't really bully out tight hunter out of the lane uh, super strong great stat game playing into melee hero, you know that he's gonna get the farm. It's all about that. This what happens cool. when they hit level six? It's about to expire. I thought maybe a go there from EG with a uh, roll, a centaur stop. They don't play an aggressive move just yet. Keeping Arteezy farming freely. He's a good wave and a half ahead of the Wraith King in terms of last hits. 
while Abed secures a bonus bounty rune here because it looks like the Enchantress will be able to slip back and take that right hand one for the Dire team as well. So Enchantress forced to get out in the triangle, try to get a creep from there. Body blocks, they just keep body blocking it. They also have a, a sentry ward that is inside the square, so that blocks it. It's kind of cool how that Ench is playing from Fog though, right? Because she's still a threat no matter where she is, and that's why Team Spirit keep both supports down here. So it means they're leeching experience from each other and losing out in that XP battle, while, you know, Earth Spirit kind of staying away from the Ursa, allowing... Arbet gets it. Oh, Arbet, yeah, takes the water route. A little tiny combo comes in. Can't really blow him up, uh, not, not at this point. Abed had a water room in the bottle, tiny one attack. level below, so still very hard to get. At least he steals the water. This matchup puck against Tiny, um, I've seen it go both ways. Like Tiny can get a return kill, can get uh, something done if Puck overextends. But, you know, one of the reasons why we see more of the Tinies lately is the introduction of the water rune. So he pushes out the wave with the three throw, three grab, and then goes back, farms the small camp on top of it. It's just a story of the mid lane these days. Yeah, the, the ability there just to just to stand his ground, not really under too much threat of dying because he is so tanky. See if they do rotate into that mid lane or if it's going to be down to those midders to TP into these side lanes later on. Team Spirit wanting to move out of the tri lane though. Again, they don't want to be stuck down there leeching XP from each other. Try and find the Enchantress, see where Fly has been playing because Ench has been taking out some of these jungle camps. Getting a bit of CS4 herself and will get closed in on here with a grim stroke, stroke, the shackles coming in. Enchantress being chased down as Fly will be dropping shortly unless these little wisps will heal her up. Fly surviving, but the stroke of fate takes it out. Unfortunately, did not have Enchant ready straight away to dispel the Inkswell. Fuck. He's getting... He is level 6 already. Let's see the Earth Spirit. He's hiding in the trees. Possibly ready to rotate on the mid lane, but the lane is kind of pushed in. So, just farming the small camp for now. And uh, there's the rotation. Refill the bottle, Enchantress will do the job after you die, pretty much. The stuff that we see lately all the time. Mm, yes, sir. Forced the TP back to Fountain, in fact. Doesn't give the TP to the tier one. Got kicked back into the Ursa. That's a long walk back to that lane. 18 CS, lacking in that, in that level and experience department. And Miposhka and Mira, yet again, moving towards the edge. Fly, the only real target out on the map that they can attempt to go on, but they whiff out on their combo, and that opens up Abed to coil the Grimstroke and snipe it. A pick off of his own, dodging away from the Wraith Fire Flash. The Boschka dies to the Potato of Edge, and Fly, these little wisps, the attendants arriving, means that Yatoro, even though he's tossed forward, can't close the gap on to Edge enough. Because of the tri lanes, all the supports on the map are very underleveled. Underleveled, we see Grimstroke, who's level 2, Shadow Shaman, level 3 at the moment. Even Raid King, six and a half minutes in, has not hit level five yet. And the one victor there is going to be Dyer's that Tide Hunter. 3.3k net worth. Oh, the roll from Crit, the clap out of Arteezy. Yatoro doesn't have a TP scroll, does he? So he's kind of stuck down here and flies rotation, returning to the bot lane. Inkswell comes, Mira, Miposhka defending their Raid King with their lives and everything they've got. But look at Ice Ice Ice. Gorge to earth and cut through the trees. They desperately scramble for any target they can grab onto, but under the tower. The shackles catching off easy. Force the clap away. Toronto Tokyo being into this fight. And the ravage from Tide. Catch everyone. Ice 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 is done for. Losing Arteezy on the left-hand side too. Evil geniuses overextending a team spirit reacting perfectly. It took them a while to try to get on him, and then he had 19 magic wand charges, so. Also healing salve use, they rotate to Doom. First rotation, got nothing out of it, so he will not have a TP scroll ready for another 30 seconds. Tiny, he needs to be active. I've seen different builds on Tiny. The one that I really like is just brown boots into Blank Dagger, have a wind place for more move speed. This time around, yeah. he decided to go for the power treads, which will delay your bling dagger. Usually, you get Maybe it between 9 and 12 minutes mark attack. if you skip the upgrade. Oh, your brown easy. boots. Thinking about the turnaround onto Mira. Down to half HP from the chain stuns of Team Spirit, though. And yeah, on that tiny topic, I know we've seen in SA quite a lot of the brown boots 
straight into the blink dagger at like six or seven minutes, and you are just running around the map finding pickoffs, similar to what Arbed is attempting now. The coil again launched out, Wraith King, half HP, but has the backup ready here to save him out. Shadow Shaman and the Grimstroke, they deter Arbed and force him to return to his mid lane. Team Spirit is really good at uh, figuring out what's going to happen in the next like minutes. They are already there, one TP rotation, one guy sitting behind him. They need that level 6, you don't necessarily need to put a point in reincarnation, it's just by having it, they see your level 6, will think about attack. whether they want to gank you or not twice before they do it. Toronto Tokyo has a wave to clear out mid. And they've put that tight down bottom, plonk him in front of the tower, soak up the damage, stop the push coming in. Wherever the Doom goes, Collapse will follow. Hood, Sol Ring, and working on the phase boot, so he's incredibly tanky. And they should have Ravage up shortly, but you can't Ravage when you're doomed. TP response is arriving, and, and Tidehunter is just impervious to all this damage. And you can't die from Doom when you're Tidehunter. <laughs> Not at this point, no. Pretty right. top of the net worth, he's highest level. He's just outreaching in this at this point. Bounty. Meanwhile, they will be able to put some pressure on the top tower. Skellies are there to support, Dyer's sitting behind Raid King fortified. all the time. I don't think EG will try to make a move here. Maybe they have a good read. There's a one ward that kind of scouted them out. At least one hero. Now Tiny mid. Another coil from Arbed. Let's see if this one can pick up a kill because Tiny snapped the coil thanks to the kick from Crit. But Mirror there with the shackles. Toronto Tokyo, the toss back onto Crit's Earth Spirit. Still sitting at 400 health with seven stick charges, bottle charges, and everything else in between. Toronto Tokyo's fine. Well, bottom lane. In comes the Wraith Kit. Blasts into the Ursa. Collapse. Gets his hood off. And Isis Ice is one hit away from death. A double for Yasuo. Coming in to react for his Tide Hunter. I'm very impressed by the way Team Spirit is playing first 10 minutes of the Beautiful. game. They're just everywhere around the map. They're reading EG like a book. They know where they're gonna go. Gonna go. I'm also stuttering um, from uh, how excited I am the, the way they're playing right now. And also the Tiny. He decided to go for the Strength Power Treads. It's something that makes the difference in that gank. He still had the magic stick plus a fairy fire, but a bit too tanky, limited the amount of damage. Crit bought the tome for himself, which got him to level six. How are supports doing on Team Spirit side? Level four Grimstroke, Shaman getting closer to level six. Could potentially make a, a rotation on the mid lane. Let's see if they want to smoke. Seems like they do. Yeah, they might want to smoke down to bottom lane because this Dying Counterpult wave from EG. They did not want to make uh, too suspicious. Just want to show one hero on the map. Otherwise, it would be too obvious. But EG having a really good read as well. They know this is coming. Retreat back from ISS Ice and fly. Boschka, Toronto, Tokyo can't get to the bottom lane. So they're going to try and wrap around into the triangle instead. But get spotted in the process. Maybe now the idea is to move on to mid lane. Tony spends his combo. But it stops the push, and that's the most important thing there for Team Spirit, is that bottom tier one stays alive. They've got the tier one top of the Radiant, uh, the Dire team, like mentioned earlier on. That's Crit trying to contend with Mira. Another coil. The Serpent Wards. Inkswell. Arbed. Stuck Plus inside. The Silent Star. The Fans of Brace hold him in place, and now the toss back again. A double kill for the Tiny. <laughs> this movement has been so swift and slick from Team Spirit. EG don't know what, uh, what that was hitting them. Are the first usage of the Doom was Dyer's not there. First the rotation, and not getting attack. anything out of it. And then the first time it was used on Tidehunter, he survived. So right now, Isis Ice, uh, you know, doesn't feel very comfortable just going in. They don't think they have Dyer's enough damage. Also, Isis Ice probably regrets maxing out the Scorched Earth. Would definitely love to have a Devourer. Reduce, um, you know, get just get more gold out of it going into hand of Midas sitting at the at third of the network on the network chart but uh, I've seen dooms just popping off completely it, when I first saw it a few times it wasn't really that great uh, the hand of Midas then you get a BKB blank dagger shoot it's almost every single time the same item build but uh, you're the king in the mid and late game like yeah. the double doom sometimes even triple doom with the third Roche you have enough mana to actually use all your abilities. Yeah, you don't go to the late game, you bring the late game to you. Exactly. Get incredibly stacked. And there is that Hand of Midas, almost 13 minutes in. Coinciding with the timing from Tiny though, and that's why we see the TP top. Tiny with a Blink Dagger behind Yatoro. A Dire Observer Ward though, I believe, spots that. TP rotation, so Evil Genius is going to try and ping pong themselves across the opposite side of the map, knowing that the Tiny won't be able to respond this time. And maybe, 
finally collapse onto that bottom objective. On towards collapse. Fly throws a few little projectiles at him. The Hellbear Smasher chipping away, but it's nice little tickles in comparison to the health pool and tankiness of the Tide right now, who can just stand his ground in front of that tower. Collapse, what a boss. He tried to use the trusty shovel, then saw that they're going at him and stopped <laughs> immediately. Like, well, I just don't want to go for it. I hope he decides to get a pipe of insight as the first item. It's a very expensive one, but he's going to mitigate all the damage coming out from the ear spirit. Look at the fuck. Mirror science stuff. Serpent Wolves not gonna kill. Didn't get the fairy fire off in time. Tide Hunter with a big ravage there. Allows Yatero to get towards our bed. Toronto Tokyo looking for a combo. RTZ soul found up to the Doombringer now. As they do have Meposhka still backing up this tiny to try and retreat, but Isocide's chasing forward. They've got the Inferno Blade, the slow down, the jump in from our bed. Finally securing a kill and two, three in a row for EG. And this tier one tower should eventually fall. Team Spirit. Sticking around. Reincarnation. Do we have it there for the Wraith King? He has a point saved. One and uh, finally gets it online. Unfortunately for them, Shadow Shaman didn't get his spells off. If he manages to drop off the Serpent Wards, I think uh, the fight just stops there. They wouldn't get uh, another kill on Tiny, possibly. Tiny, now with the Blink Dagger, will be able to jump the Enchantress. Enchantress also tanking up, going for Fluffy Hat, Power Trade Strength, Magic Wand. Might even get a Casual Clock just to be able to survive through that burst. <laughs> the Deny. There it is. Collapse body this time, and Toronto Tokyo attempts on to crit. But again, like you're mentioning, these tankier supports, itemizing to deal with that tiny combo, making sure they don't get burst down immediately. This Invis might catch them off guard, though. Inkswell plus the Tombow from Toronto, Tokyo, something they might not quite expect. But he'll show himself in that mid lane regardless. It's been quite slow and steady here from EG. It looked a little bit worrying in that position they were in earlier on, where the reactions from Team Spirit were coming thick and fast, but They've kept the farm rates up. Doom, of course, accelerating quickly. Fuck now, heading into the Witchblade, and that Diffusal Blade on the Ursa Warrior. Not That's too a big far one. away. This is one day. Take a fight uh, near the Roche, possibly in a triangle, smoke up, and turn that into Roche. With Ursa maxing out the Furious Five plus a Morbid Mask, there is enough damage to take down Roche. He can actually solo kill him once he gets that Diffusal Blade up. Well, it's quite interesting, yeah, to see the not only item builds, the skill builds change because of the item builds, right? Because we used to see Ursa with the Battle Fury. Not really go for Fury, uh, not really go for the uh, second spell too early on. Overpower, thank you. Brain being a bit slow today. It's okay, Gary. <laughs> You're used to it by now. I'm, I'm used to what I'm saying, you know, a lot of mistakes, a lot of mispronunciation. <laughs> so you're like, yeah, Gary, you're 10 out of 10. It's one of those spells that always get mixed up with Overload, Overpower, and Overcharge. Like Io, Storm, and Ursa. I don't know, my brain just can't handle it for some reason. Too many overs, not enough under unders. And there is that pipe you mentioned on the tide. Collapse, flies it up. What's the blink and the solar crest, it looks like. And there's big buff up items. Team Spirit wants to farm up the Radiance on a Raid King. This Ooh. is going to be their big timing, plus a level 2 ulti on it. Crit misses it, but there is no Diffusal Blade yet. And they're still coming in from Team Spirit to defend this Reincarnation. Ravage Collapse is available. Have a Ravage and EG to slow down by the Reincarn. RTZ gushed up. Being swells forward. The Hex catches Crit. They'll go for the easy target first. Bring the Earth Spirit down as they get a Doom towards the Tiny, it looks like. Not able to completely finish off the Earth Warrior who enrages and hops back to safety. Another Doom kind of wasted. The only good Doom they got was the Tiny on the bottom lane when they managed to get a kill on one support and a Tiny. And they hold the Ravage, right? Yeah, Ravage is going to be available one more time, but the unfortunate for Team Spirit. Oh, here we go. It's well combo. Fly, caught out. Completely off guard, and Ice 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 just going to have to stun and run away. Tiny will grant him a wish. He will fly once he uses the combo with that Avatoss. Not sure the destination is quite as he would have expected. The fly gets a, a free return trip anyway. 10 seconds and he'll be back alive. Good control of the map here from Spirit, though. In the dire jungle. Tier 2 gone, thanks to Serpent Wards. Outpost already grabbed up. 18 minutes in. Very fast tempo from them so far. Unfortunately for them, 
Wraith King had level one ulti there, oh, it's a sad. huge, huge difference. You know, it goes down by 80 seconds, and then you're ready to fight in another minute and 20. Now Radiance is online. Still not gonna feel that comfortable going in. Radiant using the scan, so they know they're in a triangle. It's all about that. We defend the Roche. We have a Ravage. We know the Doom is down. Two big items on EG. This is a blade about to be delivered to Ursa. Fuck with the Witchblade on top of a thousand gold and Doom. He is coming back into the game. The war Mike out. Oh, yeah. Hand of Midas now has a BKB out of a sudden. Look at him go. I think you're right, yeah. Team Spirit forcing EG to play in the less desirable portion of the map, that bottom right-hand corner. If they can get the Tier 2, maybe balance the scales a bit, grab the outpost for themselves down there. Tier 1 tower mid, of course. Prime objective for EG to take, as they are lacking a little bit in that structural damage right now. So they need some pick-offs to allow this to happen, but Team Spirit are giving them nothing. Blinking away from mid, realizing danger is lurking just around the corner. They're playing the map so well, understanding when they need to go in, kind of protecting the entrance to the Roche Pit. You can see skeletons around the Roche Pit and the Hellbear Smasher, so everyone knows that the Roche is not being done at the moment. Skellies die. Oh, Those Skellies. It's in a round. A nice little move by Abbott there. We saw him cut the way behind the Radiant's tier 2 mid, so making sure that attack. they're able to get something additional Dyer's out of the map, but here it is. Roshan attempted. All of this controlled literally the past minute and a half, two minutes, has been moving towards this moment, this point right here, like you were mentioning. This is a big moment for Team Spirit. They get the Dyer, Rosh, they're Oscar. dropping the Shadow Shaman wards. Reincarnation ready in 15 seconds. They can prolong a team fight with Ravage if necessary. EG scan. The Troll Priest walks into the pit. And EG has smoked up, spotting out Mira. They see the Shadow Shaman, immediate silence. The Jumping Bomber draws the Tokyo and Inkswell. They have to call the Tiny, but they lose by a crit immediately. The Soulbind comes out. Rogue Rogue's still not dead. Zoro scores, it's nearly falling. The Doom, he comes in, but Collapse snatches the Aegis. EG get the kill, but the main prize taken by the Tide. And Toronto Tokyo back in. Second round of spells. Catches out. And Artesia Ursa and crit. Oh, dearie me. He fall back and died again. Gets a triple kill. Can they chase? Blink Dagger ready in three seconds. Off the, the tide. Good stop from my side, side. But that tiny Toronto Tokyo takes down the Doobringer. And Yatoro will actually claim that kill for himself, picking up a spree. That fight was already done. They don't have... Um... Like, if they don't do Tidehunter there, which he did, but it's still a lot of damage. Toronto Tokyo went in on three targets, Avalanche plus Toss. Boy, he damage, ravage. damage already done, pretty much. Yeah, he did the budget Ravage there. Dyer's middle tower picking up the Aegis. Ranking was very close to also picking it, but, you know, you do not want to risk things. Doom going in, using the War Stomp. Uh, hands kind of shaky. Dyer's middle tower has Definitely looking shaky for EG overall. 15 to 4. That lead starting to build up for Team Spirit. Hitting all their timings and keeping that pressure on the map. And now, prime position for them. Radiant team into the dire triangle. Cut out that wave. Take the two remaining outer towers. For the next fight, you can't even do Tidehunter. He has Aegis. It, it's even better. I believe it's even better. Now they have seven heroes against five. Crit already bought back and died so his item progression is just not gonna be there the good thing going for him is that he found the fillet stone oh nice shaman also holds Abed. one oh, Abed. oh Abed. toronto tokyo nearly has him but the face shift there and nice good, nice. With great good play from chris but the gush in the back still finds the kill onto the puck in come the shackles mirror holds him in place Save the teddy bear. No picnic for you and an absolute slaughter. Team Spirit 5 alive. They're going to go high ground now. They just don't have enough damage. GG. It's e over. Calling it. They actually just tapped out. Team Spirit with such sublime team play. The control of the map, the reactions, the response to the trial.